So I'm Jess and you can find me at Hair Loss Girl Boss on Instagram. Uh, if you check out my profile, I'm always trying out all sorts of different wigs, giving you tips and tricks, making some educational videos and just having fun with it and making wigs a glamorous accessory for everybody. I've never had great hair. Even when I was younger, I always had very fine, stick straight hair, um, but I always had you know, enough of it. Um, I always kept it short, I always had a short style. I could never grow that really long, gorgeous hair. Um, but I would say probably since I had my daughter, I had some postpartum hair loss. And then about a year ago, it's almost like a year exactly, that I started having um, this really significant shedding um, where I lost about 70% of my hair in about a two month period. So I had something called telogen effluvium is what I was diagnosed with, um, which was triggered by stress apparently. So about a year ago is when that happened. And after about two months of the shedding is when I kind of got into wigs and that's been life changing. So that's kind of how I got into all of this. I will say when I was going through my hair loss and, you know, of course I'm Googling everything every day, trying to find, you know, the magic cure, um, wigs and toppers would come up once in a while. And I remember saying to myself, I was like, oh, I'm never, I'm never going to do that. There is no way. And I remember saying that to my husband too, and being like, oh my God, these websites are talking about toppers and wigs and no, that's not for me. No way. And then after, you know, the shedding hadn't stopped and it was getting worse and worse. It was actually my husband who said, why don't you just try a wig? He's like, I feel like you would love that. It's like a new fancy accessory for you to buy and you can have the hair you've always wanted. Like you've never liked your hair. Why not just give it a try and see what you think? Maybe you'll love it. So it was really him who pushed me to do it. And that same day we had that talk in the morning. I remember when I went online and I found a wig shop that was local, got an appointment for later that day. And I came home with my first wig <laughs> that same day. Um, and I remember going and I was, it was such a mix of emotions because you're, you're angry that you're kind of having to do this and upset that you're kind of at this point where, you know, maybe I'm going to be wearing a wig forever. And at the time that's, that's upsetting. Um, at the same time though, I was excited because I was like, maybe I'm going to have my dream hair. I've always wanted, you know, long, thick, beautiful hair. Maybe this will be great. So it really was kind of a, a mix of emotions and the wig shop I went to, I mean, I could not have been happier. Um, the woman I met with is one of the nicest women we've become friends. Um, and she just made the whole experience so easy because it was just like, you know what, this is normal. Women have hair loss, women have thin hair. It happens all the time and it's okay. We have a solution here. So it wasn't, it was just the approach to it. I think that just made it feel so normal. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try on some hair and this is gonna be great. And you know, it was a wonderful experience and I've never looked back. I never considered wigs in the past. And I would say right now, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't start wearing them sooner. Um, I think, I think back to kind of how much time I've wasted over the years, worrying about my hair, trying to style it to hide like the thinning spots. Um, you know, and just how much unnecessary stress I caused myself when I could have just thrown on one of this, these gorgeous wigs and, you know, moved on. So the, the first wig I got, it's very dark brown, very similar to my natural hair, but it was a lot longer and of course it was very thick. So when I first got it, I took it home and I, you know, wore it around the house and it was great. But then when it came time to wear it out, it didn't quite feel like me yet. Um, so I had worn it out a few times where I knew I wasn't gonna see anyone I knew. It was just me and my husband. Um, but I did wind up going back and having it cut and thinned to something that was much more my style. So I think that gave me a little bit more confidence to wear it out because it just felt a little bit closer to what my bio hair was before. I felt a little more confident going out in that. Um, and honestly, it, it takes time to feel comfortable telling people of course when you, you were first wearing a wig you think everyone is staring at your head <laughs> you think everyone can tell everyone's worrying about you know 
what's on your head. Honestly, something I've learned, people don't care. <laughs> like they're not staring at your hairline. I think as someone, you know, who wears wigs and has had hair loss, I'm hyper aware of everyone's hair. I look at everyone's hair, but most people, you know, if they haven't gone through something like this, they, they could care less about your hair. <laughs> you know, they might compliment it and say it looks beautiful, but they're not trying to pick out like, oh my goodness, is that a lace front? Is that a lace top? Let me look at her hairline. Um, so I really never came across anyone that just flat out was like, are you wearing a wig? So I've never dealt with that. It's kind of been an organic process where, you know, if I'm out with friends, they might say something about like, oh, your hair looks great. Or like, oh, it's grown. <laughs> and I'll say, oh, it's a wig. Um, and I just kind of approach it that way. And most times they're like, get out of here, no way. Like, I thought you got extensions or, um, so I think when you first start wearing a wig, you kind of have to take it at your own pace. Most people aren't just going to put on their first wig and go, you know, announce it to the world and feel comfortable doing that. Um, I think it's just really important to kind of take it at your own pace. Most people aren't going to ask you, you know, like I said, they might just compliment you, but people aren't flat out going to, you know, say, are you wearing a wig? And you kind of do it as you're comfortable with, obviously family, friends, and then kind of go from there. For me, I did have a couple of friends. I had, you know, a couple of reels go viral. And I guess they just popped up on um, some of my friends' feeds and they didn't know. <laughs> and then I was getting text messages from them saying like, hey, I just saw your reel, this is amazing. And other, another instance, I had someone from high school actually message me and say, oh my gosh, your reel popped up on my feed. And like, I'm going through the same thing. This made me feel so much better. Um, so it's, you never know kind of who you're reaching and by putting it out there, who you're helping. So you might feel uncomfortable telling someone you're wearing a wig, but that person might be going through some kind of hair loss struggle themselves. So it's definitely scary, but at the same time, you never know who you're actually helping by being open about it. I have to say, I think it's so unique and so special. Um, all of these women, there's such a bond because hair loss, it's really a traumatic experience. So I think being able to put that out there and meet other women, even though it's not in person and it's just virtual, um, but to kind of share that bond, everyone is so supportive, um, which I think is really unique because I know on social media, sometimes, you know, things can be not so nice. But within this community, I mean, everyone, there's just like this outpouring of like, if you decide to make your account public, you know, how can we support you? What can we do? Everyone's always complimenting each other or wants to, you know, share, or collaborate. Um, there's really no competition, which I think is amazing. Everyone just wants to build each other up. Everyone just wants to make each other better. Um, so it's really like a sisterhood almost um, where we're all there for each other kind of no matter what, even though we've never met in real life, like if someone needed something, I would be there for them. Like that's kind of how you feel about these women. Cause you really do share a lot. Like it is hard to put all of that out there. So um, I think it's important for people who are kind of just starting on this journey to kind of get involved, reach out, DM people, you know, comment, ask questions um, and just know that everyone's gonna respond and everyone's there for you and everyone's there to help you. Oh goodness. Um, I would say just the stress relief. I mean, knowing that I'm not gonna have to stand in front of the mirror and you know, with like five mirrors trying to get the angles and make sure I'm styling my hair the right way so that I'm covering all the spots I don't want anyone to see. Um, just the ease of it. I can throw it on. I know it's going to look beautiful. I can change up my style. I can change up my color without damaging my hair. Um, they're just, they're, f I think once you kind of change your mindset about it, they're really fun. It really is an accessory. You can like plan your outfit around your hair or <laughs> it's not just what dress am I going to wear? It's what hair am I going to wear? Um, so I just, I like the ease of it. I like the confidence it gives me, um, I would say my husband likes the, how fast I can get ready now. 
<laughs> I get ready faster than him. Um, but yeah, just kind of the overall confidence that it, it gives you. Um, so with longer lens, I would say keep a brush or a comb handy because it will get tangly. Um, putting a little bit of um, like hair oil on the tips can help it not get so tangly. And then as far as storing it, I always turn my caps inside out and give it a good comb, like the ends are really good comb before I put it in the box. Go with something that's a little bit closer to your bio hair to start. Um, I think you'll feel a little more comfortable kind of getting started and going out there. I know everyone wants like, you know, mermaid bombshell hair, but when it comes to kind of starting out going in public, I know for me, I felt much more comfortable when I had hair that was closer to what my natural hair was. Since then, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with wigs and like, I never in the beginning would have dreamed of wearing a wig this long, but you know, now I will play around with the styles a lot. But I think when you're first starting out, um, picking something that's kind of close to your bio hair helps um, just to get started and then go from there. Um, I would say, give it a try. You have to take that first step and try it. If you hate them, fine. But I think for a lot of people, it's just that first hurdle of actually going and trying a wig. And then once they do, they're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this sooner? Um, and also I would say the first wig you try on or the first wig you buy might not be it. And that's okay. A lot of times wigs need to be kind of customized or thinned or cut. Um, so don't automatically think, you know, oh my God, I put on, I tried a wig and it was terrible. That's it. Um, sometimes it takes a little tweaking. Sometimes it takes finding a different wig, but I think once you find like the wig, it's life changing. Um, don't be afraid of it. It's okay. It's, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to relieve your stress. I know it's scary at first, but, um, it is worth, it is worth giving it a try 100%. Yeah, there are definitely still those days where I wake up and I'm like, it'd be nice to just have a full head of hair. <laughs> um, but on those days where, you know, I'm just not quite feeling it, I try to take a deep breath, take a step back and come kind of from a, you know, a mental standpoint, there's, there's this one thing I do and I learned it from um, a fitness instructor that I used to go to. And at the end of class, you would always have us close our eyes take a deep breath and on the inhale, think of something, on the exhale, think of something um, that you're proud of and then think of something that you're grateful for with your breath. So I think from like a mental standpoint, just taking time to stop and think about something to appreciate. From like a physical standpoint, if I'm not feeling great, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put on my makeup and I'm gonna put on a wig and I'm gonna put on a cute outfit, <laughs> even if I'm just staying home that day. And I think that just kind of makes you feel a little bit more put together and can kind of help boost your confidence for that day. But I think it's, you know, it's not just a, a physical thing and not just, I think putting the mental and the physical together I think is really important. Today I'm wearing a Raquel Welch wig. This is Scene Stealer in the color Ice Java. Um, which I love, I love this color. Um, so this is a mono top. It has the lace front and the lace front on Raquel Welch wigs are amazing. You really can't see it at all. Um, and I love the mono top because you can move the part if you want. Cause sometimes, you know, you feel like a middle part. Some days you feel like a side part. Um, and also with this wig, I can, I do have the option to kind of play with it. I can pull the sides back. Um, I can kind of change up the style. So I wear kind of a mix of wigs. I wear synthetic wigs, I wear human hair wigs, I've worn silk tops where I blend um, my bio hair in the front. 
So if you do have some bio hair, you know, you can pull that out in the front. That's going to give you obviously the most natural hairline because it's your own hair. That does take uh, a little getting used to and a little practice. I definitely have some pictures of myself where I'm like, oh, that blend wasn't so great. Um, but kind of once you, you figure out your method, um, that can work. But I lately I've been wearing a lot of lace fronts. I think it's just easier. You can throw it on. You know, your hairline looks natural. synthetic wigs I did learn you know when you're styling them if you're trying to curl a synthetic wig it's much different than curling a human hair wig so that's something to keep in mind um but overall every wig every Raquel Welch wig I've had I've loved um you know in human hair obviously you can style as you would your own hair so it just kind of depends on personal preference um how much wear you want to get out of it obviously lace front and lace tops are a little more fragile than a silk top. Um, so it's just kind of maybe trial and error, trying different things. Some people love only wear lace front lace tops. Um, some people only wear silk tops. It, it really depends. And I think kind of the more you experiment, the more you try, you kind of figure out what works best for you. So I would say definitely measure your head um, definitely get your measurements because every brand is different so in some brands i have a 22 and a half inch circumference and in some brands that's a medium and some brands that's a large so don't just assume i was a medium in one brand i'm going to order a medium from this brand like look at the sizing and go buy your head circumference because you don't want to wake that's too small because it's just never going to be comfortable also ask questions about the hair um, because you wanna make sure you know what you're getting um, if it's a human hair. Um, and then also I would always say, find out about their return policy. That's very important. A lot of places will charge a restocking fee. So you're gonna to wanna to know what that restocking fee is um, in, in the event that you might be returning it. You might still be paying a significant amount of money and have no wig. So definitely check out the return policy. Try to get an accurate measurement of your head and a good idea of the cap and don't be afraid to ask as many questions as you need to feel comfortable with your purchase. I mean, I'm very fortunate, the women that I've had contact with, I, they're all so lovely and I love, I, I get lots of messages where it says, you know, you inspired me to go and try my first wig. I've been dealing with hair loss for so long. I haven't known what to do. And just kind of seeing how you're just kind of living life wearing a wig and it doesn't have to be a big deal. You know, you gave me the confidence to go try one and then they'll send me, you know, and I'll always say like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Like, please let me know how your, your consult goals goes or, you know, when you get your wig, I would love to see it. So, and I love when I get, you know, they'll send me a picture and, you know, they're beaming and they're smiling ear to ear and they're like, thank you so much. Like, this was life changing, you know, so those kinds of messages where, you know, me making, you know, a reel can help someone to have that confidence to go way outside your comfort zone. And, you know, to take that step, it, it's huge. And, you know, I appreciate them telling me that, you know, they don't have to message me to tell me that. And so I, oh, I so appreciate it. And I try to respond to every single person that messages me. Um, but I, I love when they send kind of the after picture of like, I got the wig and it looks amazing. Um, so that is always uh, super motivating for me.